start. Mike on Fikes of Friends here. I have Haseem Rockman Jr., uh, of course, father of the last undisputed American heavyweight champion ever. It's been that long. A lot of people maybe don't realize when, when your father knocked out Lennox Lewis, uh, I believe on April 22nd of 2001, um, he became that was the last time an American had the undisputed championship. And I know you'd like to see him unified again so you can take him home for yourself. Yeah, I really would. I would love to uh, for America to get the belt again because that would just bring the belt that much closer to home. Uh, the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world uh, it belongs to the Rock, and my father proved that. And you know, it's my it, it was his time. Right now, there is no undisputed champion, so if there is an undisputed champion, his time will come to an end when he steps in the ring and stops that belt. That's that's pretty confident. I think that's the kind of confidence that you have to have uh, going into this, though. I mean, you've been watching this. What age did your dad start taking you to fights? Or what age do you remember your, your father not being, you know, like having their, his, an average job? He's, uh, he started boxing in 1994, so I was three. Um, uh, that's actually when he turned pro. So he was boxing for a year before that. Started boxing really like '92, uh, so you know I was born in '91. <laughs> so uh, I don't, I don't, I don't. All I know is boxing. So there wasn't, there wasn't like a moment, like a talk between your parents that were like, "Oh, okay, now at this age he can go and watch it." It was just you were just always surrounded by it. Oh no, I've never been. I've never had a, a, a band on boxing. I never had a band. I've been going to fight since I've been able to act if I could go. That's great. Did it did it change when when your father, you know, when you talked to your father about about your career though? Did was there any reservations from him about that or not? Yeah, I wanted to fight since I was little. Since I was like what five, six, seven years old, I wanted to fight. I seen other little kids fighting. I wanted to do it too, uh, but. He didn't want me to. He, he didn't want me to box. He, and I, I came to a realization where I didn't want to box. Uh, my motto used to be, you know, my, my father's gonna break them and I'm gonna fix them up. I wanted to be a doctor, but uh, I was, or or if I wasn't be a doctor, I wanted to go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl. So uh, I got, I, I was, I was like very highly touted as a as a as a football player in high school, before high school, actually even more than in high school, before high school. And uh, my freshman year, at, at the end of the season, I had a chance to meet him with the varsity. And um, I chose to go to training camp with him, with uh, Emmanuel Stewart instead. So, you know, I gave up football right then and there after my freshman season. And I, I went to camp with Emmanuel Stewart. That was when my father said that I could take it serious because I had tried all the other avenues. I, I played basketball, I played baseball, I played football. I, I did everything else, but I, I still wanted to box. And uh, when I was 14, that's when he was like, okay, so, you know, you really want to try, you really want to do it, all right, I'll let you do it. But if you do it, you're going to have to be the best. And he said he was the best person. So he sent me with the main story, and uh, the rest is history. Well, that's, that's definitely one of the best trainers ever, for sure. Uh, it's good to see – you and your father's relationship. I've seen you guys in interviews together and training stuff. And unfortunately, of course, you know, there's been uh, some fathers that were training coaches that didn't have as close relationship as you guys did, like Roy Jones Jr., um, who's uh, Oscar De La Hoya, some of those guys. So that's, that's good to see. Do you think that's because – your father was a boxer, kind of like the kind of like Floyd Mayweather. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, I'm honored to even be talking about these these guys that you're talking about. These these guys that you're talking about are great, and I aspire to be like them one day. I, I, I pray every day that my father and I could reach the level that their father and them have reached. Uh, with that being said, I think that there's. Um, certain things you look out for in boxing. And uh, you don't realize until you got to look at it. You 
look at them. And then sometimes you got to look behind. And, and you look at it in hindsight and you're like, okay, now I know what to look out for. Having that advantage already at the, at the start of a new career is what gives you every part of the time an advantage in boxing. So with that being said, one of the things, one of the fighters that you look out for, there's certain type of fighters you look out for. You know guys from the, the Army or Navy military background, you know they're going to be tough. You know guys from, from Philly are going to be tough. You know guys from, you know, California, from the Midwest. You know certain areas of wherever you're looking at, you can you can really diagnose it and, and break down a fighter. You know Southpaws are really tough guys to beat. You know uh, Southpaws that move are, are really, really tough to beat. Uh, when you look at a, a fighter who has a champion as a father and a trainer, that's really dangerous. That's really dangerous, and I think now more than ever, it's been it's been coming to light. Look at the last weekend; we had a very, very close fight, very, very close championship fight. I mean, it was how much close can a championship fight get? Look at their corners; they both got <laughs> their fathers telling them exactly what to do, and they both been there with their dads fighting for the welterweight championship of the world. That father and son duo, it is it is something to watch out for. So. I, I just pray, like I said, that I'll be mentioned with those names when it's all said and the, the the Roy Jones, the Austin De La Hoya, <laughs> all the other fighters that, that had their dad in their corner because nobody can really bring it out to like your dad. Yeah, I imagine your your dad. Say, I'm I'm around your dad's age. I'm a little younger. I'll, I'll be forty in September, but I grew up. You know, it, watching that prime time in high school, I grew up, you know, watching your dad, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, David Tua, even some of the guys that people forget about, you know, Chris Bird, uh, Lamont Brewster, uh, some of the guys that were super talented. It's funny you say these names because these are the fights that I was going to. And, and <laughs> I'm much younger, well, not much, much, but I'm, I'm a little bit younger than you, significantly younger than you. Yeah. I've already I've been to the several of the fighters you just named. I've been to their training camps. I've been in the ring looking at them before they about to go to war. I've already been right there. I've already been right there. I've seen everything it takes from the ground up. I've seen all of these fighters. I know all these guys. I know them. And they know me. And a lot of them are boxing. A lot of them have seen me box. We're going to make history. <laughs> Plain and simple. Well, it, it's obvious they know you because you've had what it, is it not one but two fighters uh, not show up for a fight? Yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been tough, man. It's been tough. It's really, honestly, it's been more than that. But you know, when it, when they pull out a day or two before, a week before, and we've had a four or five week training camp, you're in for fight. It doesn't get reported, but you know, it, it, it's oh, we'll find a late replacement so it won't get reported. You know, like like my, my, my fourth fight. Ronnie, I wasn't even supposed to fight that guy. I was supposed to fight somebody completely different until about, what, like 48 hours before the fight? Oh, wow. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, a guy pulls out on the Wednesday before Friday night fight. What are you going to do? That, wow. That, that's an incredible challenge uh, for both guys, obviously. Well, I mean, the only reason why I was taking the fight was because I was fighting somebody who was already knocked out twice in the first round. I had pneumonia getting ready for that fight. Wow. So to be to be to be thrown a, a curveball like that, now I'm fighting a, a, thir- a thirteen fight veteran who's been hit by who's been hit by everybody and every single person who's fought has been undefeated. It was it was definitely a challenge and I definitely dug down and showed that I have the heart of a champion. I'm not gonna just let anybody just do what they want to me in the ring. I'm the boss when I'm in there, and they're going to they gonna adapt to me. And eventually, they're going to have to realize that, you know, th- this is this is, this is is an ass whooping they take. So they just going to have to take it and accept that and move on to the next fight. So, so talking uh, about that fight, did that promoter reach out to you? Do you think that knowing that – he, you hadn't prepared for him. Do you think it was kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe we can catch Rock sleeping and you know make some glory off his name? No, nah, absolutely not. He, nobody knew that this guy was gonna pull out. So just like he took the fight on two days notice, I took the fight on two days notice. 
And y'all didn't know that. We didn't know that the guy that, like, all the posters and stuff, all that still, at the fight night, still had the other opponent's name on it. It was nobody knew who he was. So he couldn't have it up on me because he didn't know that he was going to get that call. But uh, everybody's going to come and fight me a little bit, uh, a little, actually a lot of bit tougher than they, than they fight everybody else. And I've, I've realized that in my, in my my young career so far. You know, these guys fighting me is like a title fight with no belt right now until I get the belt. So I'm already, these guys already look at me as a title fight. So, you know, I ain't your average 6 and no fighter. No, no, definitely not. And um, I said, you didn't start your pro career until you were 25 years old, right? Because you're 27 now? Yeah, I'm 27 now, yeah. So I couldn't find a lot on your amateur career. Um, how, how long were you fighting am as an amateur? Or did you have an amateur? You broke up. You broke up. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, how, how long was your amateur career? Because you didn't turn pro until 25. I started boxing when I was 14, right? Uh, that's when I went, that's when I went and started. I had my first fight uh, right before I turned 16. So uh, I, I fought in, in probably 15 national tournaments. Wow. Like a lot of national tournaments. I had over, uh, I think it was like, I had 92 or 93 fights uh, total. I only lost about either 15 or 17, one of the other, 15 or 17, I know it was an odd number, but, uh, you know, I, and beating me in the amateurs had uh, the advantage of the, the, <laughs> the shorter fight and the, the point system, the way the, the way the fights were scored, I have a much more professional style, a guy can, you know, touch you, touch you, touch you, touch you, and that's going. And um, I'm trying to punch. I ain't trying to touch. You got to be in the amateurs. You got to you got to be accurate. You got to be accurate, and you got to land a lot of shots accurately because those guys don't always catch everything legitimately either. So some of the I know some of those wins and losses are a little, in my mind at least, a li not quite as clear cut maybe sometimes as professional fights. Well, you also got to take you also got to take uh, into account that. You also got to take uh, in, uh, into account that you got on bigger gloves, and in all my amateur fights, I had on head gloves. Uh, so, with that being said, I mean, it's, it's it's tough to knock a guy out, and I do consider myself a knockout. So, I, I think that that whole element of if a guy can fight, he shouldn't really be getting knocked out in the amateurs unless you catch him with, you know, a, a clean shot. And I, I have over 20 knockouts in the amateurs, so I know that. I have, I have, you know, the punching power it takes to, to knock people out. But it's it's drastically uh, hindered when you got on 12-ounce gloves and a headgear versus 10-ounce gloves and no headgear. Well, you, you came on the scene with a 40-second knockout. I mean, did, did anything about that surprise you? Did it feel like you thought it would, or was it like a surreal experience? Speaking about receive it. Uh, that's how I feel. I spoke it. I believed it, and I received it. And the same will happen with the heavyweight championship of the world. I believe that I'm the best, and uh, I believe that the only person that can pull the best out of me is myself. And uh, in order to do that, I need to have the person that brought me here to to go ahead and pull that out. I can I can admit that. And uh, as much as we argue, and as much as we may bump heads or not agree. I know that my dad, he knows what it's going to take for me to be able to defeat these dudes because this era heavyweight is absolutely nothing like the area that era that he was in. And I do, at the end of the day, believe that, and this is with all due respect, but I believe that when it's all said and done, I'm going to be considered a better fighter than my father. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's the goal. And I think that that's his goal for me. So uh, we, we, just, we just pray that we can keep our prayers in order and that we keep God first in our lives and, and we can make this happen because I, I, I know with God anything is, anything is possible. Uh, it doesn't surprise me to to hear that you're religious. Uh, listen to some of your interviews. You, your family and, and you, 
you have you have a genuineness about you that I got out of you that you don't see in a lot of people right off the bat anymore. And I really appreciate that. Uh, very humbleness and very genuineness. I could. If, I, if I'm reading you correctly, and I think I am, it seems like when you say something, you mean it, and you're confident, but you're confident in a very respectful way, and I just want to say thank you, you know, as a fan, uh, as a commentator, um, and, you know, that's that's a blessing to the sport, I believe. Well, thank you, and um, it's funny that you say that, because that's how I was raised. I, I, can't, I can't say something and I stand on it. Damn, my dad won't let me. Everything that I say, everything that, uh, that that comes out of my mouth, I have to back it up. I seen my father do interviews for years, ever since I was in the car with him when he was doing this, this right here. Exactly what he's doing right now. I watched my father do it for years. And since I was a kid, I knew what was coming. Uh, I know what I have to do, and I know that this is the brutal, the brutal of all sports. Maybe next to maybe next to MMA because that shit is ridiculous. But this is uh, <laughs> this is the sweet science and this is the most beautiful sport. Uh, I don't have to I don't have to say there there's definitely bar none to that. This is the most beautiful sport. It's one on one. It's my build with my rule versus yours. It's what I believe versus <laughs> what you believe, and it's the best jab in the ring. Well, I, I've been a huge fan since, since I was a child. I remember watching the old Tuesday night fights on USA. I'm sure, uh, you know, you probably remember a little bit of that. Uh, Sean O'Grady, Sean O'Grady doing the uh, the breakdown. I ha- I had it in my uh, head earlier, and I forget what they called the breakdown, but they did an ESPN Friday night fights too. But I'm I'm gonna put you on the spot, and you might be facing the winner of these two guys. Oh, sorry. Uh, I said, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to do a breakdown because you might be fighting the winner of these two guys. How do you see Dante Wilder and Anthony Joshua? Uh, Can you hear me now? I can't hear you at all. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Everybody watching me on the camera is going to be like, he's bringing his mic up to his face. Okay, we good now? All right. Um, so, so how, how, okay, how do you break down, uh, let's start. Very, I see them both as, uh, most definitely. Yeah, we good, you hear me? I can hear you. I heard that, you're breaking up now. Mike, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, cool. I got right, you. Go I, I, I got you. I was going to say, well, let's first let's talk about... Uh, Hello? Yeah. You got me? All right. Okay. Am I, am I still picking up? Uh, just, just a little bit. You're, good. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Um, Tyson Fury and Dante Wilder are fighting soon. You could be fighting one of those guys. Yeah, let's start there. Uh, I, I like Tyson Fury. Uh, I think he is, uh, you know, the, the man to beat in the division. Um, most definitely, hands down. He's the he's the new champion. So I really, I really think he's the man to beat in this division. Uh, as far as him and Wilder, it's gonna be it's gonna be an awkward fight. I mean. Fury is six nine. Is he gonna is gonna try to jab on his way to victory? I, that's what I would think. I would put my money on Tyson trying to outbox Deontay because Deontay, who is also um a, a great champion, a, a, I mean, look, his record speaks for itself. Forty wins, thirty nine knockouts. He, he he didn't get there. He didn't get there. You know, doing push ups alone. He did it. And he, he works hard. He's a world champion. He's undefeated. Um, so is Tyson Fury. I love this fact. Undefeated heavyweight. Uh, I look, I look at going into the fight, I look for uh, Tyson Fury to, to, like I said, try to outbox Deontay and uh, box his way to a victory. Whereas 
Uh, Deontay is going to come. I, I know he's going to start strong. He's going to try to uh, use his boxing ability in the first probably stanza. So the per, per, first four rounds, he's going to use his, his boxing ability because Deontay has very underrated boxing ability. I mean, he's, I don't know where people – a lot of people are like, oh, he can't box, he can't do this. But if you watch that, that – I'm not even going to say what fight. He has – he has beautiful. He has displayed beautiful boxing uh, technique. He displayed beautiful boxing ability, and I think people don't know what they're looking at. So uh, I think that Tyson's gonna try to outbox him. If Deontay doesn't knock him out early, I think he stops him late. I think Tyson Fury doesn't see the twelfth round in this fight. I I see that similar, and I I think it's too well, early. Oh, you got me. Hello? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, good. Yeah, I hear you now. Okay. Um, I think it's too early myself for Tyson Fury coming back. I mean, he looked he looked very rusty in his first fight back. He looked a lot better in his second fight. But I I think myself, I think he needs one more. He should have had one more before he got on there with Dante Wilder. But I can see why he did it. Why? But, yeah, I, I see Dante Wilder winning that fight. I love both those guys. Dante Wilder, I think, is one of the most amazing fighters on the planet, though. And that fight against Luis Ortiz, that's, that's one of the best heavyweight fights we've seen in a long time. I hate it. the ending. <laughs> you hated the ending? <laughs> Very questionable to me. Oh, the the stoppage, yeah. It you you could definitely argue that Ortiz uh, could have went oh. on. Oh, I said you could definitely could have argued that Ortiz could have went on. No, it, uh, and not even that. Just the way that he went, the way he went down, the, the whole it was just it, it was weird. They gave they gave Deontay like extra time to recover. When after the round he was hurt, and then in the tenth round he had like it looked like if you if you rewind it like probably like maybe fifteen seconds before the knockout, you'll see Deontay was hitting him behind the head, and that's what caused Louis Ortiz to be dazed, and then he threw him to the ground, and then you know the referee didn't give Ortiz any time to recover from three fouls, like three fouls right there. He got banged in the back of his head, he can't fight, and then he got two hands. With just three fouls, you can't do that. And then, uh, you know, but it is a fight. I think that the referee slipped and didn't give Ortiz any time to recover. He just told him he didn't even want Deontay. He did not even want him. He was 10 rounds from the fight. Of course, Deontay hopped on him and, you know, finished the job. But it was after, you know, a, a little bit of foul play. And that's in my eyes. But, you know, when you're in that fight for that many seconds to put a roll, you got to be ready for that. You got to be ready to... I'm ready to die in there for that belt. That belt was in my house. It ain't fake. This ain't, this ain't for play. That belt was in my house. That belt was in my residence. It belonged to me. It belonged to my father. It belonged to my mother, my brother, and my sister. It belonged to my family. And we're going back to get it, all of them. Because they're splitting them up right now. But we'll, they'll get it together. And I'm going to come right along. You know, history has a funny way of writing something. So I just got to do my part so I can go ahead and live up to it. I know God. I, I know God has a great plan for me, so I just, I, I just look forward to it. What, what do you want to see next? Do you have an opponent in mind? For the next two years, I just want to fight as many fights as I can. And who I fight, I don't care where I fight. I just want to fight as many fights as I can. Uh, I want the rounds because I see that that's what I'm going to need. I need more scenarios to be in. I need uh, more more situations to figure out. Uh, and until I do that, I won't be <clears throat> I won't be questioning the title position. I won't be I won't be saying anything about a remnant system or a title shot. But trust them to leave. Once I get the round, and once I feel like, you know, the, the time is right for me, because, like I said, this ain't my first rodeo. 
the Pomeranian Rising Line, and I'm humble enough to know that. I know that it's time to turn like the man and die. But my time is coming. And when it is my time, either I'm going to let it either pass me by or I'm going to step up and take advantage. And uh, I think that, you know, the type of person I am, <laughs> I, I know what to do. Well, I mean, you. I think we're headed into another golden age of boxing. Like you said, you know, you could end up being even better than your father, but I think we have a similar situation, kind of like in the nineties. We have a lot of great fighters right now. I think we're on a, I think we're on the cusp of another golden age of uh, combat sports. And I keep telling everyone that with uh, all the people coming up and especially American fighters, you Dante Wilder, um, I know Tyson, you know, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua are familiar to the American crowd now. And I think, you know, it, it's going to get big again. The end. Some other sports are kind of, you know, having a little lull. And I think combat sports are going to take their place. You had you had Tyson, you had Riddick Bowe, you had Lewis Lewis. That's kind of how I feel Deontay Fury and Wilder fit right now as as far as the heavyweight scene. That's that's how I would kind of describe him right now. Uh, I, I, I got to say, if it was Tyson, Lewis, and Bo, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take that side over to Wilder, Joshua, and Fairy side. That's just, this is my personal opinion. Match to match, I think everybody on that team would have beat everybody on the other team. But uh, I do think that there's a lot of potential, but it's just that there's, man, they're not stepping up to fight each other. Why these guys not fighting? <coughs> Those guys all fought each other except for Bo and Lewis. Bo, Lu- Bo didn't really fight none of them. Bo was trying to, that's how Anthony, Anthony Joshua is about to look. He's going to be the really Bo of the heavyweight team if he don't fight Wilder because Bo never fought Riddick. And that's no disrespect to Reddy Bo. Reddy Bo was a great heavyweight champion. I actually reached out to Reddy Bo for advice before. So that's, uh, that's, that's my guy. That's the champ. But I'm just making comparisons. Yeah. That that was going to be my next question out of all of them. Who who throws their uh, belt in the, in the trash can? <laughs> I mean, you got Tyson. You got Tyson Fury. A lot of their fighting right now. But, you know, Joshua got all the belts. I mean, what you going to do? He got it. He can't throw his belt in the trash. He can't do that. He, he got to fight. He, they, they, they're going to put him in a position where he has to fight, or he's going to have to give up the belt. That just don't look good. That just don't look good. So I, I was just looking at an article about three hours ago, and Anthony Joshua was actually quoted. He said he was looking past Alexander uh, Povetkin, which he fights, I believe, on the 22nd. It's coming up here. And he expects to fight Dante Wilder in April 2019. That seems like kind of a strange assumption to me, especially since Dante still got to get through Tyson Fury. But it sounds like he's warming up to the idea. I think if you don't to fight Dylan White in a rematch next year, he can say he wants to fight Wilder all he wants. But, I mean, the Wilder fight could have been made for the end of this year. So... It, it was, it, you're not going to tell me that Alexander Povetkin wouldn't, wouldn't take, you know, step aside, but he, he still have his mandatory spot after uh, Wilder and Joshua unified. That, that was easy to do, so don't say that. The money wasn't the problem. Well, well, what's the problem? I mean, Wilder said he would be the B-side. Wilder said he would come to England. I mean, he took the money. I, 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 just, I don't know. I don't know all the ins and outs, but at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is that the fight wasn't made. And you got one person really pressing for the fight, and you got another person who's really, like, kind of on the edge. Uh, it's just, it just looked like Anthony don't have no interest in fighting Deontay Wilder. No time soon. I expect to see that fight in 2020 never. <laughs> uh, do you think do you think he would get away with that as as an American champion? I mean, I know Riddick Bowe had kind of a similar situation, but right now we're not in you know boxing's not they're get I think it's getting back there, but it's not quite you know the darling of the media that maybe it was in the nineties. Do you think he can get away with that here? 
what's going to happen, my prediction of what's going to happen, I don't think that they're going to meet and, and they're, gonna, they're both going to be undefeated. Uh, I think at this point, one of them is going to lose. No, before they meet up. I don't think I think they missed the, the bus on both of them fighting when they're undefeated. Not saying that it's still not gonna be a great fight. It, it, and that's the thing about today's era in boxing. They they put way just the not me, but the, the general the boxing public puts way too much uh well, I wouldn't say way too much, but they put a lot of uh emphasis on being undefeated. Like as if if a fighter is defeated then they, they just don't know anything that they learned before they got hit with that one shot. And they can't, they're not the same fighter anymore. And they just write people off so fast. But most of the champions that we love today, long after their careers, all suffer defeats. Um, most of them, like I said, majority of them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Bernard Hopkins, most people probably don't realize Bernard Hopkins started so, his career off with a loss. Uh, and it's, it's a guy out there right now. He started his career off on one two, but he just ran off, I think, 17 or 18 wins. He's about to get hot. He's a light heavyweight. He's about to get hot. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's those type of stories that make boxing great. And, uh, you know, you can't count anybody out. And I, I learned that in my last fight. My last opponent had over 20 losses, but he had more wins than he had losses. And he got in that ring 50 times before he fought me. And uh, he bought every trick he ever learned. And out, he bought them all. He bought all his little veteran tricks out to the ring to be. He came up short, but I'm sure he gave it. He gave it everything he could, and uh, I, I did nothing less. I gave it everything I could, uh, and and I got the win. I was awarded the better man that night. But um, you know, but <laughs> boxing is just such a such a, a a beautiful sport because everything is gonna come out in, in the end. When, when you lace them up and that bell rings. Everything is going to come out. So until Anthony Joshua signs that contract to fight Deontay Wilder, I just don't think it's going to happen. You know, I was going to bring that up. When, when you fought Raymond, whose idea was that? That is crazy. Nobody fights somebody with 50 fights in their sixth fight. <laughs> That's re respect, man. You see these people with, you know, these records and everybody, you know, they're going to Tijuana and fighting guys that are 0-29. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm undefeated. And then you're Peter McNeely and you end up on the pay-per-view with Mike Tyson getting knocked out, you know? <laughs> yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, these guys that, uh, you know, uh, these matchmakers have not been easy on me. I've had opponents deny different states because you know they, they just even before i even had one fight i was already getting opponents denied my, my my original my original pro debut opponent was denied by the commission because of the caliber fighter he was the caliber fighter i was they don't even know what kind of caliber fighter i was i didn't even have no fight yet. i could have been a cold bum they don't know i ain't even fight yet i didn't know but uh you know as far as I, I I love I'm, I'm so happy that I fought somebody with 50 fights now because I've watched that fight 50 times. Now I got 50 more tricks. I I, I mean this guy did everything. He, he I mean he did everything from from the, the beginning to the very end. He did everything he could. He did everything he could to annoy me, to try to throw me off my game, to try to win the fight, and he did it. You know I came out on top, but uh. It was it was definitely a great experience, and I I know that if I, if I fought him again, it wouldn't be the same fight. Yeah, that's you. You can't buy that kind of experience. I was I was so surprised when I seen that on your record. I I'm looking at box rec. I'm like, that's got to be a mistake. He didn't fight somebody with 50 fights in his sixth fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My last fight, I fought somebody with 50 fights, and and I feel like now I have uh, you know a better experience. Than, some, than a guy that's 10 and 0 and he fought, you know, 10 guys that's 2 and 2, 0 and 2, 3 and 2. Just go to these guys' records. Go to these guys' records and look at the opponents that they fought. And then just look at how many how many fights these guys have had that I've been fighting. Uh, I mean, it's just like, these, in, my, in my fourth fight, in my third fight, in my third fight, I fought a guy where I think like 16 fights. In my, my fourth fight, I fought a guy where like, I think it was 13, 13, 13, 13 or 14 fights. My fifth fight, 
15 fights, I think your third fight, James, James Jones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'm cheating. I got box yeah. rack up, so. <laughs> Steven Tyner had uh, 20, 22 fights. And uh, you see, and then boom, then you go up to Raymond Orsay and then it's 50. So it, even though these guys didn't have great records, they still had to get in the ring. They still had to get hit. They still threw punches. They, you know, that's experience. I don't care if he was 0 and 50. He got his ass on 50 times. He's been in there 50 times. He know what to do. And my opponent had a winning record. It wasn't like it was a losing record and he had 50 fights. He won the majority of his 50 fights. Yeah, and... And who knows how the matchmaking and things are going, like we talked about. You know, a lot of people can have padded records, and, you know, he maybe fought a lot of tough guys. I mean, he was willing to fight you in his six fights. That That's the one thing that I, I'm, I'm a big fan of MMA and boxing. The one thing that I like about MMA, and maybe it's just because there's not as many fighters, I feel like it's kind of like it used to be. Like almost like everybody fights everybody, and if yeah. you lose, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it, it's man. I've seen fighters. I've literally seen fighters that that I have grown up with. I'm talking about since I was from when I was a teenager to where I'm now as an adult, and I've seen them take a loss in the pros and act like they never. They they just fell off the face of the earth. Like it's the it's the worst thing in the world. To, man, it, it just it just it makes me it makes me disappointed and it makes me upset because you know you know I know these guys and I know they're better than you know what what, what they putting out there and I, I just I, I you know I still pray for them to this day but um right now we just focus on Hashim Rockman Jr. and Sharif Rockman and we, we the next big thing in boxing I, I can guarantee you that. You guys would be the first ever father son heavyweight champions. My, ever. Me and my father would, but me yeah. and my brother. We also my, my brother I have a brother that fights as well. I seen that. I seen a little I seen a little clip of you on a showtime fighting for uh, twenty three minutes without a break. <laughs> yeah. Um, my brother though, he's uh, uh Sharif, he that was good yeah. though. This is he my, me and my brother just fought on the same car. He's turned pro now. He's grown into a, 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 a man now as, as opposed to whatever was young, whenever. But, he was you know, very he, young. How Do you remember how young was he then? He looked like he was 18, maybe 14. 18. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, regardless of that, uh, uh, Sharif has grown to be a, a damn good middleweight, a damn good middleweight. And he's going to make a lot of noise in that division. And uh, I, it's still going to be a rockman in there. So. <laughs> You know, and, and I think, you know, if I'm, if I'm being 100% honest, he may be the best boxer out of all the rockers. When I say about uh, just pure boxing, you know, I, I think Sharif may be the best one as far as what he's, what we display in the ring and uh, IQ outside the ring as well as in the ring. I think Sharif may be the best pure boxer because my father and I, we're heavyweights. Sharif's not heavyweight. He has to. His boxing has to be more because he can't rely on his strength as much. Yeah, that's that's a totally different game. I mean, yeah, yeah there's my, there's no. My father answer. and I didn't start boxing until we were already grown into heavyweights. Sharif started boxing. He was fighting that. Sharif had five fights at one forty seven, one sixty four, one sixty, one sixty eight, one seventy eight. You know, Sharif fought all those different leagues, all those different weight classes. He has a lot of experience. So it's uh, it's a lot of it's. It's a lot of noise coming from the Rockman camp. And, uh, you know, 20, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, you know, we're we, we, we going to be making a lot of noise for the next years, every year, every year, next year, we, we coming. I, I don't know who making noise now. I don't care. We coming. <laughs> I, I got a couple questions uh, real quick from uh, somebody from, from Facebook. Uh, Alex Squires from Facebook. Uh, he wants to know um, what was the the toughest uh, moment in your career so far, and what was the easiest? Maybe you thought something was going to be tougher than it was. <laughs> uh, it's funny you ask that. It's funny you ask. That's a great question. Um, all right, toughest moment in my career. I was it was in sparring. 
Um, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, so I'm just going to read. He, is what he typed is, what was your toughest and easiest fight? So I kind of did put words in his mouth. <laughs> My toughest fight was the Ronnie Hell fight. My toughest fight was the Ronnie Hell fight. Man, I had pneumonia. I, a doctor told me I, would, I shouldn't fight. I was crazy if I fought. He told me I was only going to have about 45% of my lungs. And uh, I went and, you know, I went and my heart out there anyway, put it all on the line, and, you know, with pneumonia. That was definitely uh, the toughest moment in my career. I mean, I was fighting everything, fighting a guy who had way more experience, fighting a guy who, you know, was tough, and he, t he took a hard shot, and he gave a hard shot, and it was, it was, you know, that was tough. That was tough to get through, and I'm glad that, you know, I rose to, I rose to the occasion in the moment. Uh, easiest moment? Man, this shit is a tough sport. I don't even know. This is, this is, I would say, easiest, probably, oh, Chang. I'll probably say my last fight was the easiest. He, really? I don't really give him that much respect. He was probably the easiest. He was the fuck. <laughs> I should have knocked him out in the first round. F 50 fights. That's saying something, though. That's. Yeah. Uh, that's... I'm going to make him the easiest fight. I'm going to make Ronnie Hill the toughest. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, I'm say I have one more question uh, from, from YouTube. Uh, well, I think you already answered this. Kind of says, uh, Andres, uh, Andres Jimenez uh, says, how long uh, you think before you're ready for a title shot? You said about 2020. Uh, listen, this is the thing. It could be 2020, but I thought I was going to fight 24 times in 24 months. I seen I that. I seen you say that in 2017. I wasn't going to call you out, but. <laughs> no, 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 I, I called myself out. I called myself out. I thought I was going to be fighting more. But I, in hindsight, I'll go back and look. I was young. I was, I, I was younger. I was so ready to fight. And I didn't understand much about the boxing uh, uh, as far as I believed a little bit more than what I should have. Uh, you know, even if uh, you, you can get fights every month, they don't always come through. You know, people have been pulling out fights. Things have been happening in my life. I lost my son last year. That that really, that really, really made the Ronnie Hill fight tough because I was coming off of losing my son. I was very emotional. Um, I'm still emotional about it. Uh, it, it it's, it's just a, a really, really tough uh, I don't know how to word it. I'm not, I'm not really sure how to word it, but uh, yeah. I would. I would. Hmm. I'm really sorry to hear that. My condolences. No, no, no. It's okay. Oh. Um. Um. Uh. So uh, Andre Jimenez from YouTube asks, how long do you think before you're ready for a title shot? I would say yeah. no more than no no more than no more than thirty months, man. I'll be ready I'll be ready in, in about eighteen. I'll be ready in about eighteen eighteen months because you don't have to get ready for a title shot and, and just you know, just overnight it doesn't happen overnight. I need to be able to train myself and learn things and get into certain positions and overcome certain situations with my father. And, you know, we need to build up so we're, we're ready to when we challenge it, there's nothing that's going to stop us. I can go ahead, get a ranking, get a, get a, get a few, you know, top contender fights, beat two or three top contenders, and then, you know, I step to whoever got the belt. So I would say maybe, maybe two to three years. Well, I, lo I look forward uh, to watching you and hopefully getting those belts. Do you and Sharif train in the same gym? Uh, Sharif lives in California right now, but when he's in, um, when he's in Vegas, we, we train together a lot. We don't really train in the same gym, but we train together a lot. And, and where's that at? Is he is he over there in Vegas right now? No, he's in – Sharif lives in California right now. He trains at uh, Wild Card West in, in, in Los Angeles, California. Okay. Uh, I took him in. I trained at uh, Prince Ranch Boxing here in Las Vegas. Okay. All right. Well, shout out to them. Hey.
thank you very much for doing this, man. Uh, like thank I, you. Thank you. Uh, you're you're very humble, and that's one of the biggest reasons I'm rooting for you. I think, you know, genuine attitude and people being genuine, it, it's a rare thing in the social media and everything, this world right now. And so thank thank you for being a genuine person. And oh, thank I'm, you for having me, man. So I really, really, I really, really appreciate it. Hey, well, I look forward to having you again. Just don't forget me when you put that strap around your belt. Promise me that. Uh, yeah, man, I, <laughs> I promise you. We can do it anytime, any man. You know how to get in touch with me. Um, just real quick, I want to thank uh, all my whole family. I want to thank Everlast. I want to thank uh, everybody that had anything to do with me where I am today. Uh, Celebrity Socks. I want to thank Hypervolt and Hyper Ice. And I uh, also want to uh, give a huge 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 the biggest thanks the biggest thanks goes to god because without god without god uh none of this would be possible and nobody would know me and uh if you want to know me and you do like me you want to watch my story you can subscribe to me on youtube just look up yimma y-i-m-m-a-h or you can uh follow me on instagram at hasim rockman jimmy man i appreciate all the support man please 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 support subscribe and uh you know follow my journey could you, could you spell the YouTube uh, channel for me so, a little the slower, real quick? Is, yeah. Is Y I M M A H, and it's uh, the, the 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 profile picture is a picture of me and Dixon. So uh, I'll be posting. I, I, I do a lot of gaming. I do a lot of gaming. So you know, my my subscribers know I'll I'll game. I'll be on. I'll be streaming actually later live tonight. I stream in my free time. It's just something I like to do. I've always video games. I like on me. You, yeah, you stream on YouTube or Twitch? Yeah, I, I stream on. I was streaming on Twitch last night, and I'm gonna be streaming on YouTube tonight and probably the rest of the weekend. So they can catch me on YouTube if uh, they want to subscribe. And I literally my, my last page got hacked, so I'm starting all over. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. I only got eight. So if you guys get anybody can reach out and help me get to 100 subscribers. That'd be great, man. I, I, I appreciate it. I'm actually, and once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna drop a, a spawn video of my dad and I. So uh, that look out, be on the lookout for that. Me and my dad are gonna be spawning once I get to a thousand subscribers on the Yuma page on YouTube. I'll go ahead and drop that video. So any anything helps. Just you know, follow on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and I, I will fight for you. I'll keep my hands up, keep my head moving, and keep swinging. I promise y'all. All right. Well, definitely plug me. Uh, and if you don't mind, it, uh, just send me uh, all the links to your, all your social media, and I'll make sure and link them in the video so people can know uh, where to follow you at. All right. I will do that on Facebook Messenger. And everybody subscribe to his YouTube channel, or I'm going to send Hasim Rahman and his father to your house. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you again. God bless. All right. God bless.